Solar eclipses are amazing to witness because the moon and the sun seem to overlap perfectly in our sky, even though the sun is way bigger, about 400 times. The trick is, the moon is also about 400 times closer to our planet, so they end up looking the same size to us. Sadly, at some point during our planet's history, solar eclipses won't happen anymore. You see, the moon is actually drifting away from Earth, sliding away about one and a half inches every year. Because of this movement, the moon will no longer completely block out the sun. Experts at NASA went on to calculate when the last solar eclipse will happen. Mm -hmm. They say it's still going to take about 600 million years, so it's safe to say none of us will be here to see it. Speaking of things we won't see in our lifetime, we might need to add stars blowing up to that list. We know what stars look like when they fade away because of telescopes, but we've never seen one with the naked eye popping up above us. Betelgeuse might not sound like a familiar name, but know that it's a red supergiant star located about 1,000 light years from us. What's special about it is that it might explode and put on a spectacle that's never been seen from down here on Earth. This star has always been a bit of a mystery in terms of when it's going to pop. What we do know is that Betelgeuse is in the late stages of core carbon burning. And this carbon burning phase typically lasts around a thousand years. Chances are we won't be seeing any stars collapsing anytime soon. But since this event will most likely be harmless for our planet, it's something exciting for future generations to look forward to. Also, if you're curious to spot Betelgeuse in the night sky, it's usually visible in January and February evenings, and by early August, you can catch it before sunrise. It's got this unique muted orange-red hue, perfect for showing skeptics that stars do indeed come in colors. Our planet will also suffer a lot of changes in the future. If we could travel some millions of years ahead, we might not recognize our planet's maps at all. Currently. Earth has seven continents, but it hasn't always been that way and it will most likely change in the future too. About 310 million years ago, Earth had this mega continent called Pangaea. Around 180 million years ago, it started to break apart. Now scientists think that in the next 200 or so million years, we might see another large continent forming. In fact, we might be right in the middle of this whole supercontinent formation. There are four main scenarios of how this new land could come to be, each with its own twist. They all link back to how Pangaea split up and how our continents are still shuffling. Our day, the 24-hour cycle we live by, is slowly stretching out too. This sneaky gradual change will eventually lead to days that are 25 hours long. And here's why it's happening. Earth's rotation, that spinning we do each day, is getting a bit slower each year, and it's all thanks to the moon. That's because our satellite is sort of stealing some of Earth's energy. We know this is happening because of a cool gadget called the Laser Ranging Retro Reflector. It shoots laser beams up at the moon, and when those beams bounce back to Earth, it takes a tiny bit longer for them to return. This little delay is a clue that our days are stretching. So, how much longer until we get one extra hour each day to finish up our to-do lists? Well, experts over at NASA did some calculations. Over the last century, our days got about 1.4 milliseconds longer. And if we zoom out and look past the 2,000 years, using historical records of solar eclipses, our day has stretched by an average of 2.5 milliseconds every century. Tedious calculations aside, we'll need about 50,000 years for a single extra second to be added to our day. That means it will take 180 million years for a day here on Earth to have 25 hours. That is, of course, if nothing else happens to our planet's rotation in the meantime. The Milky Way and one of its closest neighbors, Andromeda, are planning to merge somewhere in the future too. We won't be here to experience this interaction, but it probably won't feel like much of a change from down here on Earth. Galaxies colliding may seem a bit unusual, especially since we know the universe is expanding. If galaxies are moving further and further apart, how come they still get to meet with each other? 
Well, galaxies that are close don't just float around. They each have an effect on the other, thanks to gravity. That's the reason why the Milky Way and Andromeda are moving closer at about 186 miles per second. If we do the math, it means their collision won't happen for another 4.5 billion years. And chances are, they're going to gently pass through each other, without visible changes being felt from within our solar system. There will come a time in the distant future when Saturn's stunning icy rings won't be here anymore either, at least according to some new research. NASA's Cassini mission, which spent its time orbiting Saturn between 2004 and 2017, gathered some new information about these rings and when they might disappear. You see, scientists have been debating for a while how old Saturn's rings are. Some thought they must be pretty young because they're still so bright and icy. They figured that over billions of years, they should have been worn down and darkened by all the space objects crashing into them. In fact, it's possible that these rings were still taking shape when the dinosaurs were roaming the Earth. When foreign space objects sneak into the rings, they shove material from the innermost circle towards Saturn at a pretty fast pace. As a result, Cassini saw the rings losing tons of mass every second. That means these rings aren't going to be visible for too much longer, in cosmic terms at least. They're estimated to last maybe a few hundred million years at most. We might also miss this next cosmic event, but barely. That's because according to some estimations, it might happen in just a hundred years. The Earth's magnetic field might collapse flipping its north and south poles. Researchers claim that for the past 3,000 years, our planet's magnetic field has been on a steady decline. And if this trend continues, we might hit a critical point in less than a thousand years. For the planet's poles to switch, the magnetic field needs to weaken by about 90%, and this can take thousands of years. During this vulnerable phase, our planet loses its protective magnetic shield letting in more cosmic rays from space. The last time this pole flip happened was almost 800,000 years ago. Problem is, we're currently in one of those riskiest phases, the fields getting weaker, but there's a chance it might regain its strength. At this rate of its decline though, it could nosedive to nearly zero in just a few centuries or a millennium. And we're already witnessing the effects of our weakening magnetic field on our satellites. In the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean between South America and Africa, there's a region where Earth's magnetic field is three times weaker than at the poles. Scientists call it the South Atlantic Anomaly. Satellites passing through this zone consistently face electronic problems. No one knows why this weak field region appeared in the first place, and predicting its future moves has been pretty inconclusive. One theory is that a massive swirling whirlpool in Earth's liquid metal outer core might be responsible, pushing the magnetic field away from the South Atlantic. Another thought is that the magnetic field in this region is pointing in the wrong direction, like a mini pole flip. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.